This is the Apollo capsule 1 6 scale interior pieces. You want to take your pieces and make sure they're good and clean. No raised particles or anything from printing. Check the alignment of all your pieces. I just use photographs when assembling mine. Photographs of um, the actual uh, kit pieces. No real instructions required. It's fairly simple. Just line up the edges of your pieces. Kind of like a 3D puzzle. And glue them together. Here you can see I'm just checking what pieces go where before I get started. It's always best to sand or scuff the sides that you are applying the glue to. It doesn't take a whole lot of sanding or scuffing to uh, make the glue adhere real good to the next mating piece. You definitely want to sand every side that will be glued. Uh, for sandpaper, I'm using a 320 to 220 or even a 180 grit. Sometimes you get some imperfections from the 3D printing and it's a little bit easier to sand it out with a bit rougher sandpaper. Here I'm working out an imperfection that I found. I'm just sanding it a little bit harder, you can tell. Definitely want to spend a good few minutes doing each piece. Make sure you wipe off the sanding particles when you're done. Uh, use a soft rag, t-shirt material. Uh, microfiber towel works pretty good. I obviously didn't have a rag handy when I did mine, so I just brushed mine against my shirt. Definitely want to continue sanding your parts. Again, make sure you sand every side that's mating together. It is critical to get a good bond. For glue, I'm using a thick CA glue, which is like a, it's similar to a thick super glue. Uh, you can order it from Tower Hobbies or HorizonHobbies.com. Um, you can also order what they call a kicker which makes it dry even quicker. It's like a, a, a liquid spray. Once you spray it and it makes contact with the CA glue, it dries within two to three seconds versus the 25 to 30 seconds that the CA glue would do on its own. Um, but yeah, here I'm still sanding my parts. believe I'm about ready to start gluing it. I'm checking the alignment of all my pieces again one more time. So here's the uh, CA glue that I'm using. And there's the kicker. Apply the CA glue to the mating pieces. doesn't take a whole lot and make sure you're quick about lining up your parts when you glue it it 
definitely want to look this over as you go. Make sure that everything's lining up really well. I'm using my kicker now to, to get the edges of it to dry much quicker so I can move, move on to the next piece. A little last minute touch up. Checking how the alignment will be before I apply the glue. Here I'm just trying to show you how the how the piece is set. All right, time to put the glue on. So again, make sure you line up your pieces really well. Make sure you take, take your time in doing it, uh, you know, before doing the glue. Put it on a few times, line it up, practice doing it. Then put the glue on, and then remember, you don't have much time after that. You need to be moving fairly quickly. Here you can see how well it's lining up. This is the uh, side interior panel for the Apollo capsule kit. This top piece here is, is part of the upper hatch assembly. I had to split the walls up into three pieces. Actually, I'm sorry, that's four pieces. Four pieces is what the walls is. I'm gluing four together here. This is the, the last of the pieces for me to glue on. And then I will attach it to the uh, back middle panel. You can see on the end of the countertop there, one I had already done, one side is already glued to the back middle panel. I'm going to show you uh, on this one. I didn't show it the first time because like you, I was learning for myself the first time how to do it. And I figured that I would share what I learned on the second side of it. I'm gluing this last piece here and then I will attach this to that uh, bigger back middle panel sometimes I'm not able to actually let go of a part to spray the kicker to make it dry faster sometimes I'm having to hold it the full 20 to 35 seconds
Ah, finally getting some kicker on it. Okay, there's how the each panel should mirror each other, but this is, you know, one of the side panels. This is pretty much how it would look. Make sure all your edges are lined up good. You can always do some sanding and trimming on the edges if you misalign one. All right, so now I'm going to show you that you're going to take this uh, side panel now and glue it to the back middle panel. You can see the side I've already done against my chest. I'm just lining it up. Again, make sure you sanded them edges. I may have already sanded the edges uh, previously from when I was doing the first side. I may not show that in the video. You want it to go together somewhat like that. And then your center control panel, do not glue this on until the very end. I will show you later on in the build video when I glue this on. But for now, I'm just kind of using it to test the fit. It'll go together like so. And take your time doing all this. I don't believe I've applied the glue yet. At this point in time, I'm just making sure everything's going to line up really good. Like I said, you get one shot at it. pretty happy with how that went okay so yeah now I'm going to uh, sand the sides that's being glued together and the reason I'm sanding this is because once I glued that side piece together I might have had just a slight little uneven bump from the edges not quite lining so I'm sanding that down to make sure that everything lines up good before I apply the glue and attach it to the other piece there. Yep, I'm definitely gonna sand that uh, main middle panel now, I'm sanding that now. Again, you wanna sand all the mating sides, make sure everything's good and clean nice smooth surface nice smooth flat surface but at the same time slightly rough for the glue to bond to you want it to a nice sanded texture for the glue to have a good adherement to anything from 180 to 320 grit will be fine for this Again, all these are plastic parts and uh, with plastic things have a tendency to have a slight warp to them or uh, slightly bend to different angles so sometimes during the gluing it's you know uh, required that you put a little bit of force and pressure on things to manipulate the parts to adhere to each other Using the kicker to get one side to bond and then here I might have had to uh, after I got it got one side of this because it's such a big piece I'm gluing together I believe that uh, I probably had to put a little force on the other side and, and and get it to get it to sit where I want it so to speak that's kind of why I like this kicker 
and CA glues here. It allows me to work with it a lot better. Here you can see I got a nice clean bond and my center console will fit where it's supposed to. Again, do not glue this center console on yet. You do not want to glue this on yet. You want to leave it loose for the time being. But you do want to check your fitting and make sure everything's fitting correctly. So this is the Apollo couches back half. And uh, this is pretty much how it will come to you guys. I'm going to show you kind of how to clean it up. This is the back portion. And uh, let me kind of show you what you got. So here is the front portion. And it gets glued to this right here. So that's your front portion, okay? Then you'll get the uh, an astronaut uh, feet rest right here. And uh, I'll show you how to assemble that too, but this drops in here. So that's how that's going to be assembled. And this can be removed if you don't glue it. So then you could do like, you know, uh, only the pilot in his chair on that side. And then you can have these out, you know, because they would, they would stow away. On the Apollo missions, they'd stow this stuff away so they would have more room to maneuver around in that tiny capsule. But uh, anyhow, I'm going to kind of show you right now how to clean this up and prep this for gluing. Um, what we're doing is we're taking the wood burner or soldering iron and we're just smoothing some of this stuff out that's really rough from the 3D print just by melting it and rubbing it like a pencil or a pen. And... Uh, you know, it doesn't take much to, to get an idea how to do it. And uh, it's better than using sandpaper. But uh, I'm going to struggle with trying to get the camera where it needs to be. This is going to be my problem to try to show you what I'm doing. Okay. Let me try to get this positioned where I could do some work and you can kind of see what I'm doing. All right, let's try this right here. I'm gonna try to do what I'm doing. I had kind of started on this one a little bit before I got the camera out, just for everybody to know. And you could take your front piece and put it on here so you can kind of see what's going to be visible. And I'm just trying to clean this up now. Uh, Due to the complexity of printing this piece, there was no way I could print this smoother. This is where the supports were. And uh, this happens to be the only spot in the front that's viewed, which you'll see. And you can manipulate the part with the wood burner Besides not only just, you know, smoothing it, but you can also like round stuff off. You can remove pieces that, that you don't like. We are not going to be doing this uh, post print for everybody. Yeah, that would just be ungodly amount of time for us to do this. We'll clean up the bulk of it and then allow you to, if you want it that detailed and that clean, you can go in and clean it up. <clears throat> go in and clean it up more than what, how they came to you out of the box. A lot of this is not visible anyway in the capsule because it, 
it's such a confined compartment and you'll see that later on in build videos You can already see that this side looks much better than that side from me just doing it a, a little bit. This is where it pays off to take your time. They got some really fancy uh, wood burner soldering irons with different different tips that you could change. I'm just using your typical pointed tip for soldering. But if there was an area that I needed to get into, I could change the tip to something uh, more suitable. If it gets to be in too pliable, just stop for a minute and let it cool off. Or you could work a different area. I got this soldering iron on eBay for really cheap. I like them with the LED lights so I can see a little bit easier it's already starting to look a lot smoother than what it was And if I take it out of camera, I'm sorry. I'm just having to position it where I could do what I need to. But you'll get the uh, logistics of what I'm doing. Okay, so what we're looking at now is uh, I've done this one. Compared to that. Take your pick. With a little bit of paint and some uh, weathering up, you'll never see it. Um, I'm gonna put the couch back on here for you can see. Couch sets on here about like so. I'm really zoomed in too, so let me zoom out. Anyhow, so now I've got the rest of them to do, and I will return when I have that done. Okay, I'm going to show you how to glue the footrest together for the uh, astronaut couches. Um, you'll get each footrest is three pieces. Those are the three pieces. The, the footrest, uh, I think that's the... Uh, top of the uh, butt cushion that's the top where his astronaut butt would go and then this is all part of the uh, seat rest all right so 
they would go pretty much like this. You really just gotta match up. And then this one's going to go like so. All right, so I'm using thick CA glue. Um, you can pick this stuff up at your uh, local hobby stores. Michael's um, Hobby Lobby uh, online you can get it from Tower Hobbies you can get it from uh, Horizon Hobbies or you can use a thick uh, thick super glue This stuff is sandable. That's one of the reasons I do like it and it dries really fast and creates a super, super nice bond to the plastics. Just line up the pieces that you need. Keep in mind, it's more critical to line up the sides that you're going to see versus trying to line up a, a joint or something that you won't see. All these parts are printed on different printers, so they might have a slight different alignment. So it's, it's best to focus on what, what's going to be more noticeable. And this stuff dries in uh, 25 seconds. It's always a little bit slower than what they, what they claim. So I have a little bit of time to work with each each piece. It dries to your fingers within a second. I will tell you that much. The bond on the plastic is much slower. But if you want it to dry fast, you can hit it with a kicker or igniter. They also sell that at the same places. It's made to go with that CA glue. So that is how you glue the feet rest together. Just three pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. So you'll get one more shot at watching. Maybe I'll try a different zoom. Typically I sand to create a good bond, but uh, these are a light duty part. I mean, they're not really holding any weight. And with them not being sanded, it gives me a little bit more time to try to line up my pieces. I apologize if you can't see. I'm hoping that you'll get the logistics idea of how this goes together. Alright, 
now we bring in the uh, back piece of the couches. Zoom out. This was the piece that I was working earlier with the wood burner. Or soldering iron, I'm sorry. Soldering iron. And now I'm going to attach the front portions of the astronaut couches to it. Just lining up what's going to be visible. And then your couch should drop, your uh, feet rest should drop in there like so. Removable. Next, we're gluing uh, these pieces to the couches, which has. Uh, this right here, I believe, was a fluorescent light for the astronauts. They're going to go in the couches right in here, like so. And uh, there's enough shape there that you can see to line up. I'm just going to put my glue where it's got to go. don't believe it matters which one's which everything's everything was pretty much done symmetrical Just line this up here and I lined it up up here at the top. Next you're gonna do is the headrest. You're gonna put glue on this little piece here and it's going to set on this little piece here.
that's that. This is the astronaut couches after being painted. And the instrument panel here is just spray painted with paper cutout uh, gauges glued on in place. I will be providing these papers for you to cut them out. And uh, I'm showing you the interior after it's been painted and installed. Use something flat like your kitchen counter to glue your heat shield together. Sand the areas between and then just line everything up before you glue it. Um, it's pretty simple. I prefer to glue two halves and then I'll glue those two halves and then slide them together. After you have glued the outer hole pieces together and lined them all up, this is so that you can fit the top heat shield cover. In this particular model, the RCS bar is projected out forward and will not allow the future heat shield cover to slip on. So I'm heating an X-Acto blade to cut this loose. That's what you see me doing here in these corners. And then using a torch, you can heat the ends up of the RCS bar at the bottom towards the hinges. Just gently heat it up enough to allow you to push it back. You only need a few millimeters for clearance. With it warm, you should be able to push this back as I did here. Here we're going to remove the recovery cable, which is 3D printed, and install a real cable. This will allow it to have some flexibility so we can slip over the forward heat shield, which I will show you later on in the video. Once you remove the 3D printed cable, you're going to want to find a drill bit to match the cable that you supply yourself for this. I'm using a picture frame cable, which is about three millimeters thick. So I will be using a three millimeter drill bit. Make sure you drill out the center of the basis where the original 3D printer uh, cable was so that you can install a real piece of cable with some glue. Now it's just a matter of sizing up the cable to be the correct length. You just don't want it to be too long and sticking too far out. I use the docking ring that you see behind it to kind of help judge for size and length. I don't want it sticking up past that. 
here I'm about to slip over the cover and I can feel the cable binding up behind it. In order for the forward heat shield to fit, you have to remove these feet that's protruding out at the bottom of the top of the parachute frame housing. Simply heat up an X-Acto blade and cut them, then sand them down and you can use a little filler to fill in the hole. You'll want to trim all four feet if you want to be able to use the forward heat shield. going to want to make sure that your heat shield fits over your top portion of the uh, parachute frame housing assembly very well. Here you can see that I'm examining 
what else I might need to sand down or get it to fit. I'm moving on to the do-it-yourself service module. In your kit, you will get these vinyl templates that you will simply peel the backing off and stick to foam board or plywood of your choice to cut the round disc that you need in order to make the service module. Take your time here. It's not as easy to apply the vinyl as you would think, I struggled myself to get these on here. You only need to make one template. You can trace your first cutout on the rest of them. You need a minimum of three to four discs. Using an X-Acto knife or box knife, scar the area around your disc to cut out a smaller box, square shape.
to make it easier to work with this so you're not having to try to cut it out on the giant 4x8 sheet of foam board. Using this applied vinyl graphics as a template, you're going to cut out your circle. Use one of your first cutouts as a template to cut two more circles. You will need three circles in total to do this job. Four if you prefer four, but three minimum. We used three on ours and everything worked out pretty good. This foam insulation board is very easy to sand smooth after cutting it with the uh, box knife. You can use some simple 120 to 220 grit paper to sand the edges fairly smooth. None of this will be seen anyway, so don't spend too much time doing this. We will be using what's called ram board to wrap the outside of this uh, frame to give it some actual shape. Cut out the half inch squares so that your square rod will fit. Make sure they sit flush to the uh, circle here. This is the initial design that uh, you're trying to build using a uh, planter's pot for the engine bell. You can glue the bottom circle to the top of the engine plant or bolt it together and then install the half inch stick rods here I'm using a simple uh, square to help uh, you know divide it all up there's 20 sticks all in total the sticks come in three foot lengths you're going to want to cut them down to 26 and a half inches this is the ram board that we use to wrap around our framing you can get it at Lowe's for about $35 a roll. Start with the back side of what would be your uh, frame. Wrap around the front, keeping it nice and secure. We use a simple staple gun to staple the ram board to the frame. Then went along the outside edge of it with a small bead of hot glue. It would look like weld once painted over. So this is prototype I'm using the uh, Minwax polyurethane oil-based coat to put on the cardboard because when you paint cardboard it absorbs the paint instead of hold the paint on the outer surface and uh, I've been doing this now for a few minutes 
I had to run up and get the camera. But, um, hey, this is where it pays off watching Karate Kid, man. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> nice, straight, smooth brush strokes from top to bottom. And uh, this is my first time doing this. So I don't know if this is going to work or not. And uh, I guess we're gonna find out together, won't we? So I've now made it to where, getting around to the back side here. I don't know how long it takes to dry, and my main concern is, is that I put too much on and that the cardboard gets soggy. Uh, this is actually RAM board, so it's, it's slightly, it's pretty thick. But I'm hoping that this dries and leaves a thin layer of film on it to where then I can hit it with the primer and then paint it on, directly on top of it and then start gluing on the 3D printed uh, detail pieces. Uh, I was going to paint it a shiny silver, but I'm worried about finish and how the finish is going to turn out. So I may opt to do a, a flat, uh, like a flat gray. Do a really light flat gray. Paint the uh, radiator grills like an off white. And of course the uh, castle is that aluminum, aluminum, uh, silver look it's supposed to be a chrome but it's spray paint so you know you're never going to get an exact chrome out of it I'm definitely not going to put two coats of mid wax on here I can see that the cardboard is absorbing it but it goes on pretty thick And uh, to me, it feels like I'm brushing on Elmer's glue. It's that, it's that thick, this min wax. Just kind of touching up a few places that either it's drying up already or I missed. can see a couple areas that are denting here here that wasn't dented before um, I cannot say for sure that that did not happen when we carried it down from the upper level of the house to the uh, garage we were bear hugging it and it's possible that the cardboard dented at that point in time this is the back of the capsule where the seam is. Or the, it's the back of the service module. This is where my hands were, and I had them all spread as much as possible. So that might account for where there's dents on the back of it. If we end up with a bunch of those spots in the very front, then I know that it wasn't from carrying it, and that it's possibly from getting it wet. But I think with a flat color, you will not see any of them uh, blemishes there. And they're minor in comparison to things. And um, 
aircraft skin and and uh, they all nothing's perfect they all have like little waves and wrinkles in them and I guarantee you that the service module was the same way because it was all riveted together and sealed up but um, Yep, so it feels like I painted a bunch of Elmer's glue on top of this. And now I'm just going to let this dry up for the rest of the day. And then when I come home tomorrow, if I have time, because tomorrow is our last day before heading out on vacation, I might spray a coat of primer on top of this. If not, it'll be here when we get back. Here you can see the service module after we had primed it over. And here we are painting the outside 3D printed parts white. Some of the parts require you to cut out an opening for the back side of the pieces to fit through. Here you can see the back side has this piece that I was talking about that needs to fit through the border. Here it is after I've glued it and pressed it to the outer side. These are the uh, panels for the service module for the side of the service module. They print three. You'll have four sets. And um, I'm gonna show you how to assemble those. You're gonna want a nice flat surface, a kitchen countertop or a glass top table. Um, just going to clean this edges up, make sure there's no burrs. And you gotta line up line up the design just so you can kind of see how I'm lining these up same tactic as I always do I might want to sand the edges a little bit your thick super glue lay it on the flat edge of the table put them together and slide them back and forth a little bit so that they would have a good cure keep these edges edges pressed flat to the floor now the glue I'm using has an instant kicker which is a spray for instant um, anyhow you could buy this at uh, any of your hobby stores right. and again apply the glue I use a thick super glue because it doesn't run. And if you have the patience for epoxies, you can use an epoxy. So I slide them together. Be sure to let it fully cure before you <laughs> try to go picking it up. Got one little area here where I didn't get any glue. Alright, 
What's that? So you have your side panels, the three pieces that we glued together, the four sets. These were the original test pieces that I printed that I just taped up here in position. But uh, anyhow, just using simple hot glue, you will glue your uh, four panels in. And the reason I'm replacing these other panels is, is that these printed uh, were really rough the first time. So I made some changes to make them print nicer. Anyhow, using a hot glue that has high and low settings for temperature, I'm using a low setting. You will glue your panels into position. And I just use photographs online through Google search of the service module to figure out what panel goes where. It was not, you know, rocket science or nothing, so. I'm not as picky about my particular model as some guys are. I'm not, uh, I'm not building one for a museum, so to speak. Mine is for myself. Anyhow, I find that the, the low glue, low temp works really good without harming the plastic from the 3D printing, especially these really thin panels. And it's really quick application to go on. Simply line up your four heat shield pie shaped pieces and then apply some uh, glazing putty and spray it with some texture spray paint. As you can see here, the more texture spray paint you spray, the more it will hide the lines. Here you can see I painted it white and still have a little bit of lines left. Okay, so you're going to take after you paint your uh, instrument panel and everything and put your... Uh, paper printed gauges cut out and glued on you will glue it to your uh, piece that we assembled earlier that I showed you earlier in the video you're just simply going to drop this in here and line this stuff up and you will press in and glue this so what I'm going to do is put glue down this bead and attack it to here first and then I will tack these together and um, I don't have anyone here to help hold the phone. I'm working, running out of place in my house. I have so many projects going on. So looks like that's about as good as it's gonna get as far as me having it where you guys can see it. So I'm gonna put glue along this edge instrument panel in and bring it back to tack it into place and again I have a glue that bonds with an instant kicker and I'll hold it for a few seconds Now, I can put my glue in the back of this panel and manipulate it to each side by pushing.
and put my glue in the rest of this joiner. And hit it with the insta kick just to help help this bond better. All right, and I'm gonna put the glue now on this side. pressing them together so they get a good bond. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, just like before, put glue in the rest of this as a filler. help strengthen this edge. All right. Now that's my cockpit fully assembled. I'm going to set this up so you can see. That is the Apollo capsule cockpit. Now, this will pivot here because it's a hole. I don't know if you can see down in here, there's a hole here. I went ahead and just glued mine and I'm going to cut some wooden dowel rods for mine to go from here to here and paint them. Um, I'm not gonna provide you those wooden dowel rods. You can, you can measure it and cut your own and sand them and paint them. But this is how the cockpit will be. I'm working on the final assembly of the Apollo capsule and I'm putting LED lights in mine. Now, LED lights will not be included in the kit, but if you want LED lights, I could give you the web links to where I got mine. And if you want RC switches to turn them on and off with everything that I've made to do mine, I'm willing to include that in the kit. Uh, not the switch, just the uh, piece to mount the switch. Um, I got my parts laid out over here. I still got some parts that I'm painting and drying, and I'm just gonna try to walk you through what I'm doing as I put mine together. So here's my interior piece. And what I'm going to do is put a bead of glue along this and then drop my interior piece in there. I'm gonna use some Velcro to, to mount my battery in a position that I can try to get to it through the forward hatch. I'm going to mount my switch to the side inner wall of my capsule so that way when I can reach in and turn it on and off simply right here and charge the battery right through that forward hatch. Um, that's pretty much the logistics of what I'm doing tonight. I will also be putting a bead of glue along the outside edge of this to drop the outer hole to and possibly trying to get to the top. It just depends on how long it takes me to do this. Okay, so I'm going to use a like a two minute epoxy up this edge, down this edge, and here. And then I will take the cockpit with two hands. I got one hand on it right now because one's holding the phone. And I'm gonna fold this over and line up onto that epoxy, these edges, okay? That will be how I'm going to glue the cockpit to the bottom of the heat shield, okay? Under here, it's a nice compartment. You guys can decorate it how you want. Me personally, I'm going to use it to store a battery and I'm going to mount some LED lights in here to point up into this, which will not be included in the kit. But uh, I like to light the inside of my models up. So that's going to be the next step for me is to mount my wiring and do some LED, LED work. Okay, so I made this to kind of help hide some of these wires. Uh, this will be glued to the um, interior wall of the capsule's outer hull. And uh, it just holds an RC switch. My other hobby is uh, RC plane flying, so I'm quite prone to using 
uh, components from my other hobby. See if I can't find a better screwdriver. Alrighty. That's my switch now. That's going to be glued to the inside of the upper hole in front of the hatch door. Go ahead and place my just a new mill six volt battery and I'm using Velcro to secure it. I find it's going to be much easier to install the lights while you're building it instead of trying to go back afterwards. It will not be near as easy to go back and do this later. So I'm putting a rechargeable battery in here and just in case that battery does fail, I want to be able to get it out. These are hubs, it's just a hub. I will get you a link for these if you want them and the LED lights. And I'm just gonna tack my LED lights down with a little bit of low temp hot glue. And I already kind of plugged it on and set it up, kind of have a, an idea of where I want my lights before I got too involved in this project. So I kind of know about where I want them. And I moved them around a good couple inches and it didn't change the outcome a whole lot of the how it was done. And again, it's just hot glue, so with a little bit of effort, you can get it up and relocate it. can't see up under the couches too much anyway so don't worry about trying to get too detailed with it once the couches are in and the astronauts are in you you really can't see up under here I'm gonna put a little velcro on this hub so I can place it where I need to and get it moved. That's okay. Okay. Now the next step is going to be is glue my uh, interior to this. And for this, I'm going to use a thick CA. Um, Another good thing to do would be to use like a good five minute epoxy. Okay, so you just kind of line up the square edges in here. And I will hook my cords up. Definitely don't want that to fall off there. But you do want it close by. To be able to grab it.
Now, since this is still wet, I highly advise you to grab the outer hole and slip it over and make sure that you line it up because you can manipulate before that glue dries to make sure everything centers up good. I'm talking about lining up the outer edges of the of the uh, outer hull to the heat shield is what I'm referring to. Because this is a press fit, the angles are so tight in here that as you can see the top of that interior panel, it is all a press fit in here. That's why it's critical to, to get a good alignment. And I'm looking inside here to make sure that everything's where I want. You also want to look inside here and line up the handle that they use to pull out with the center of the door. And it could all be a little tricky. It's why I use the CA because I could always take a, a scraper and chisel through there and bust it. CA is like a thick super glue. Um, if you use the epoxy, don't use so much. Just do a few drops on that inner piece. I'm checking the gapping of the heat shield around. Okay, that's looking good. I'm gonna pick this up now. And uh, that glue dries really quick, so I'm just gonna check it and make sure it's dry. Yeah, she's already dried up pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and hook these wires up to my hub. And those are for the couches to light up the dashboard. This is a kicker accelerator. It makes that glue dry even faster, just in case there's a couple places that it's still bonding. Okay, so now I'm probably gonna move my heat shield to a flat place off of the control module so I can get a good alignment for the outer hole. Okay, so now I have the uh, control uh, cockpit attached to the heat shield and uh, it's not super, super dry yet. So in case something's horribly wrong, I could still get a chisel up under here or a flat scraper and gently tap it loose. Um, what I'm, I also have it just sitting on some foam, like a insulation foam, just to keep it from getting all scratched up. The bottom of the heat shield looks like this. It's painted white. Um, 
Anyhow, the next step for me is to get the outer hole slipped over this and with it being on something more firmer, I could push down and, and glue it to the heat shield. And you're gonna to wanna to be able to line everything up. The walls on the uh, outer hole are pretty thick, so you don't have to get real close to the edge, which is a good thing. I always watch to make sure that my stick is mixing correctly. So the colder your room that you're doing this in is the thicker that this stuff will be. So if it's really warm, like a hot summer day, it's gonna come out more runny, if that makes any sense. Right now it's pretty dang cold in here. So it's pretty thick. walls on the uh, outer capsule is like 3 eighths they're about 10 millimeter thick so I'm staying trying to stay not real close to the edge here I don't really want my stuff oozing out back it out a little bit. Alright. Alright. The most important thing is to center up that bar through this door. You can eyeball that. Tape seems to be working pretty decent so far. Realized y'all couldn't see what I was doing. I'm working on gluing the top to the top of this now. up here like so and then this cover will be a slip on cover it will not be glued on I want it to be able to come on and off I also have this uh, ring go up here and we have the probe the docking probe and I don't I don't want any of my stuff glued on and the reason why that I don't want it glued on is because you have to remove those to get the hatch open and I'll show you what I'm saying so first let me show you how this sits up here sits up there just like that okay now let's say it's all glued together you would you would take the probe off okay you would remove this 
then you can just pop off your hatch, your uh, docking ring. Okay. Now, I have a little piece of tape here on mine, but now the hatch comes off, and you can actually put your astronaut, you can mess with your astronaut coming in and out. I don't know if you can see my hand wiggling in there or not. But uh, anyhow, That's why I'm not gluing these parts. I'm only wanting to glue the top. Getting ready to glue this to the top of this. What you're gonna to wanna to do is center it up, centering this to the door, all right? And take the top and place it on it. What you're doing is using your fingers to center this up and then gently lift the top up without moving the bottom. Then take your pencil and go around the outer edge so you can kind of see where it needs to be. Okay. Then, you're going to want to apply your thick super glue, epoxies, or whatever glue you're using around the outer inner edge of this. Using your pencil line, quickly set this in place. Make sure you line this back up again here to the center. Drop this over. Get everything really lined up good. Let that set and dry up. Now you can put your hatch door in the top. You can put your docking ring on. Which is just a snap fit. You can put your top cover back on. Make, make it sure that while doing all that I didn't move anything. And then you've got your uh, probe, which just sits in the top of this.
I tell you, sometimes with the probe, it's it either goes in easy or sometimes you have to fight it. So it just there we go. Okay, so now you need to know where the back side of your service module is, and um, that's just going to be how I try to put my seam on the back side. But it's actually my direct back is over here, uh, just to the left side of it. But that just depends on you and how you build it. Um, the reason why you want to put that on the back side is you're going to pick the capsule up and put it now on top of the service module. And you want to be able to have everything line up good. I'm sorry for blocking camera view. <laughs> Not much I can do about that. She's definitely heavy. don't quite have it lined up on the back side the way that I want and I'll show you what I mean what I'm trying to get to see what I got okay yes uh, I want my umbilical port to be right here so this is where I'm gonna take and twist my capsule to put my umbilical port here just like that I want my umbilical port here the reason why we're doing that is so that when we glue this it will be over here between these panels. And how we're going to attach it is we're going to drop fit this into here. Sorry. Just like this, with it sticking out a little bit. Put some hot glue on it, and then we're going to position it where we want up against this. That way we can take it on and off and get the capsule off because it'll just rest. The idea is for it to just be able to rest on this piece. And if this doesn't work out, then I'll maybe do it with Velcro or something. Simple but effective.
Now I'm going to assemble the high gain antennas. Kind of a press fit, press this into the yoke. Just like so. And then this is going to go into this. And it just rests in this. And this snaps in there pretty good and has some allowment to twist it. You can always drill a hole through it and pin it if you want. But uh, the flat sides of the antenna arrays I'm going to suggest you flip it upside down and remember because you flip it upside down that which piece will go where again using low temp low temp hot glue lining up the back pieces is the high gain antenna. I'm probably gonna drill a dowel pin through mine at some point. Give me a long drill bit and do that, but for now I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, so then the uh, high gain antenna would go to the bottom of the service module. There's this piece I provide you here that you can glue to the bottom of your service module. And then this just simply will slide into that piece for your high gain antenna. And you could take that piece out whenever you need. This concludes our final build video for the Apollo Space Service Module and Capsule. Um, if you have any questions during your build, please message us on our Facebook page, Danger Zone 3D Printing, and I'll do my best I, as possible to help you. Just a quick glance looking through the window hatch of the Apollo capsule with the LEDs turned on. The remainder of this video is just some photographs of my completed command capsule just to give you general reference of what it would look like with LED lighting. I also have some photos that we photoshopped of our capsule flying through space just for fun. Please enjoy.